Thanks to the supporters of channel member Nathan Rowley. Well, after the calmest, most sensible transfer window I think I've ever done in non-league, we only signed nine players. We are ready to get started with life in the National League. The board think we're going to get relegated. The media think we're going to get promoted. I suspect we'll be somewhere in the middle. I think we're going to learn a lot about that today, though. Hello and welcome to part 20 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games ever in the National League. And what a way to start against two former and relatively recent football league teams. We're at home to Yeovil, away to Southend. This is a baptism of fire and could lead to us getting absolutely battered or laying down a marker that we're actually going to be really quite good. One thing I do probably need to not get too alarmed about is all these players we've promised we're going to improve the training facilities to. It's like the whole first team. Most of them are expecting it at the end of this season. Some of them expecting it at the end of next season. Spoilers, it ain't happening ever unless someone gives us like three million pounds. So just don't tell the players. It'll be fine. This is the team for the first game ever at this level against Yeovil. Yeovil, who were last in the Football League in 2019. So it's been a little while of just being a rubbish mid-table National League team. So although they are, to us, they seem like a really big team. If we, if we are going to survive, they're a team we probably should be beating. So this is our 11. We've got Marshall in goal. A very new look back four. Three new players in the back four. Stewart, um, Kwanzaa and Leeson joining last season's left back, Donnelly, playing at centre-back. We've then got um, the youngster Griffiths at the base of the midfield who definitely needs an upgrade. Um, we'll see how he gets on. We might have to drop Cissé back there for future matches. We've then got Cissé and Hinchy in midfield with... New boy and former Peterborough United youth player Flynn Clark uh, behind Campton Sturridge, who was one of last season's top scorers, and new boy Okoronkwo fresh in off of Everton, I want to say. Everton, exactly. It should be a good team. We are fully committed to the diamond. If we do decide to play with wingers this year, we don't really have many. Clark could go wide um, and Okoronkwo could go wide. They're probably the only two, realistically who in our current setup could go out and play wide and they'd both want to be um, attacking wingers, not wide midfielders. So any hope of returning to the 4-4-2 that we were using as recently as like seven or eight league games ago, that's done. We uh, we are committed to this shiny new look system and Campton Sturridge is in early and was this close to being able to claim his... Uh, his position as first ever goal scorer at Tier 5 for Peterborough Sports. Of course, if you missed the memo in yesterday's video, we're no longer playing in Peterborough. Um, the B Arena not fit for this level of football, supposedly. Having been there, I'd probably agree. But you'd like to think we would have done some work on it. Maybe when we were upgrading those training facilities, we promised everyone we're going to do. Um, but the B Arena not fit for this level, so we are playing at Hitchin, which if you are normal and don't know where Hitchin is... Hitchin is just outside of Cambridge. So we're uh, we're still in Cambridgeshire, but we are a good half hour, 40 minutes away from uh, away from where we were playing previously, which is not ideal for the very small number of fans we already had, who presumably the majority of which used to walk to the ground. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of fan base we've got at this level and what the plan is, especially if we were to eventually get a promotion again, what is the plan? When do we return to Peterborough? Is there ever a ground share with Peterborough United on the cards? I doubt it, because for some reason, football manager doesn't do stuff like that, but it would be the ideal ground share. Whether or not Posh would agree to it, who knows? Um, we certainly don't need a ground that big just yet, um, but it is Yeovil who are on the attack. They've got a corner here, swinging it into that near post. Kwanzaa, Ed's clear. I have got big hopes for Gerald Kwanzaa, having used him on Twitch this year, presumably a different version of him, but he was a great championship centre-back in the uh, in the Twitch save. He's not there anymore. We've moved on beyond being in the championship with Posh on Twitch. You should come and watch. I'll be live tonight, twitch.tv slash Lelujo. If you can't make it tonight, the highlights of that will be on Lelujo 2 tomorrow morning here on YouTube. So either way, you should be watching that save. I would have liked to have watched a save there, but apparently Philip Marshall had other ideas. Although the referee has disallowed it. Wonderful stuff. It remains nil-nil. And we are and we're holding our own at the moment. We don't look completely out of our depth. 
We don't really look like scoring either, but maybe that's about to change. Campton Sturridge dropping deep to pick up the ball. He's got plenty of options ahead of him. One of them's Okoronkwo, and now Griffiths spraying it forward to Leeson, who's pushed forward from right back. If he can square it, he can. And Jack Hingey, the man who spent half of last season telling us he was going to leave before signing an unexpected two-year contract, has popped forward from the position we invented for him. He is the original Mazala, and there he is. Scoring a football goal. Beautiful stuff. And he is the scorer of Peterborough Sports' first ever goal at this level. Jack Hinchy, what a time to be alive. Let's uh, let's just do the same again in the second half, please. How many fans have arrived? I think we have to go to match stats, don't we? 570. It's roughly the kind of attendances we were getting last year. Maybe a little lower than a typical attendance last year. Certainly not the boost you would expect for moving up a league. But that's a lovely ball from Flynn Clark. And it falls to Okoronkwo. And he's got his first goal for the club. It's two goals in relatively quick succession. Either side of halftime. It's a lovely through ball from Finn Clark. Flynn Clark. This is what we're looking for from him with his championship calibre having come on a free transfer from Norwich. It's a lovely through ball. Remember, Norwich once paid Peterborough United £750,000 for Flynn Clark earlier on in his career. And now he's rebuilding in the town he was born in. What a story Flynn Clark could be. Are we allowed to sing that he's one of our own? He was born just down the road from the ground. Quite a long way from this ground, to be fair. But the original ground, he was born nearby. Right, Yeovil with the goal kick. And Donnelly deals with it relatively comfortably, although his header doesn't find a sports player. But Okoronkwo is in behind again here. Can he grab a second? He can't. His shot goes just over. But the Yeovil keeper... Didn't look like he'd... It was he going to even attempt to save it? So it definitely feels like there might be another goal in this for us. We've gone from struggling a little bit in the first half to really asserting ourselves as a dominant team now in this second half as we settle into these new players and this system. A ball over the top, looking for Campton Sturridge. We know how slow that boy is. He was never going to get there. And of course, he didn't. And... Uh, Yeovil are in, and that's a beautiful save from Marshall. And then the ball again bounces off Kwanzaa this time, and it's another fantastic save from Marshall. Yeovil could have got two goals as part of that attack. Marshall officially keeping us in the game. Um, it's interesting to see as well, as we move higher up the pyramid, um, the flatback seven is going to become more prevalent, I expect, based on what I've seen from other saves. Um, the flatback seven, the higher up you go, just seems to be used more and more. Right, both of our centre-backs are shattered. Luckily... We've got loads of options. All four of our starting defenders today can play centre-back. Um, so we're going to bring on Reese Bennett, who is a centre-back. And then I think we'll also bring on uh, James Morris, who is a left-back. And then we can just move Stewart across and play centre-back. That's easy enough to do. And we're also going to take off Campton Sturridge and bring on Sewell. Um, I do want to have a look at Kean Levy. We'll hopefully do that in the second match. He, star rating-wise, is our best central midfielder. Although... Cissé and, and Hinchy are the men in possession at the moment, but there's an argument for dropping Cissé back to DM and uh, bringing Levy into the team. There is the shot from Cissé. There's chaos in the penalty. I think Hinchy's been fouled there. He has, and it's going to be Flynn Clark on his return to Peterborough. Not the city, a club in Peterborough. Not in Peterborough anymore. I hate ground relocation, but Flynn Clark has scored his first goal for Peterborough Sports. He's one of our own. He's not, but he basically is. It's the closest we've got. We don't really have a youth team still, um, but Flynn Clark, I'm going to be very excited about him as a posh fan in real life, having one of our former young players as a star for Peter Sports. That's the that's the kind of thing that tickles my fancy. Are we still only allowed three subs at this level? We are. That's a shame. Um, right, three nil though. This is. I mean, this deserves praise. It didn't look like it was going this way in the first half, but we have made this look relatively comfortable. Are the media right? Are we actually... Do we actually have the potential to have a promotion push this season? I still doubt it, I think. But we'll learn more in this in this first away game coming up. Clark is dancing through him again. I tell you what, he's going to be a player at this level. Flynn Clark, a second goal for him. A cartwheel for him. It's 4-0 to sports. What a first day in the, champ in the championship. You've not missed a few episodes. This is the National League. What a first day in the National League this is. And what a return to the city of Peterborough for Flynn Clark. I tell you what, he's going to be on the back page of the Evening Telegraph this weekend, isn't he? Goodness me. Lovely old stuff.
Should we go and do it again? Folks, I just want to take a moment to thank today's episode sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 different countries. And it's a place to get inspired, learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. And now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. With a Skillshare membership, you can engage in your passions and hobbies all year long. And it's also the perfect way to start and keep New Year's resolutions. So make 2023 the year you perfect a new creative hobby, land a new career, or launch your business. And you can try out a risk-free 30-day trial to test it out for yourself. I've been working with Skillshare for a long, long time now, initially as a customer and as a brand partner for years now. And back in the day, I originally joined to help sharpen up my video editing skills when I was starting off my YouTube channel. If you're looking to do the same, a class I could particularly recommend is this one, video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for beginners from Geordie Vanderput. And this is a fantastic course because it takes you from the very, very basics of what digital video is and how Premiere Pro is set up for you to work within it through to some of the more advanced techniques that are they're kind of like advanced beginner things. They, they look cool. They look like you really know what you're doing. And this class makes it so they're not actually that hard to do, such as using fancy transitions, incorporating text into your screen, setting up your own templates. This really is a class that takes you from absolute no clue what you're doing beginner to being able to put out a very professional looking YouTube video. So if you are one of the many people at this time of the year looking to finally get your channel up and running or get started on any manner of other creative hobbies, they've got classes on Skillshare ranging in all sorts of areas from animation, creative writing, photography, web development. And that's all available as part of the free trial that the first thousand of you will get who join using the link at the top of the description below. That's the first thousand people to use the link at the top of the description, get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You've got absolutely nothing to lose, loads to gain, Go get it click, folks. Right, just the one change for the South End game. We're bringing Saul in up front with Campton Storage dropping down to the bench. Um, other than that, the rest of the team staying as was. Well. Campton Storage was the one disappointment in that last game. Um, so we'll just try our strikers in a slightly different arrangement as we search for our best combination up top. Let's get this team submitted. Of course, South End, another former Football League team, possibly a little more recently than Yeovil. They might have even come down at the same time. The historians will let me know down in the comments section, I'm sure. Um, but certainly a a big guy, a big name at non-league, a big ground, a former championship club, of course, as Yeovil were as well. Um, and for me personally, a, a team I've managed previously in non-league legend. Somewhere in my extensive football shirt collection, there's a pink South End away shirt that I bought about five or six years ago. And um, because it was a great shirt and the South End portion of that non to legend was a load of fun. You should go back and watch it. Um, I, I'm not quite as comfortable in front of a camera and it's a little bit weirdly edited and a bit odd in places and a bit clunky. But otherwise, it's great. Go and watch it, please. I'm not wearing a suit, though. I look like a right scruff bag ruffian in those videos. I think they've, I think they would, I had my face cam in those. Might have even been pre-face cam. It would be devastating. I know a lot of you watch just to see my face these days. What a goal from Okoronkwo, by the way. We might have our, our new star up front. Clark and Okoronkwo have settled in beautifully to this team and are causing all kinds of problems for defences at this level. It's Flynn Clark with a through, through ball again and Okoronkwo with a beautiful finish around the goalkeeper. Perfectly placed. Is there anything sweeter in football and seeing the ball come off the inside of the post and then hit the opposite post. Possibly when they cannon into the underside of the crossbar. That might be the only thing that's a more satisfying goal. But either way, we're 1-0 up. We'll have Southend have a dangerous free kick here just before halftime. That one comes back off the post as well. And Marshall is very lucky. It's come back, hit him and bounced off away from the goal rather than into the goal. I've seen those go in plenty of times. So Marshall can count himself lucky there. He was well beaten by the free kick but it wasn't quite accurate enough. And um, we don't make any changes at half time. And now it is into the second half and South End are on the attack once again. And Marshall this time collecting comfortably, maybe setting himself up for one of his enormous goal kicks. Here he goes. Look, the Marshall lump looking for Okoronkwo. Can't find him, but Hinge can at the second attempt. Okoronkwo can't get it past the keeper. I thought he was going to get another go, but he didn't, unfortunately. 
and the highlight just kind of peters out. But Okoronkwo is looking very, very dangerous for us. It, I mean, he's played in both positions in this attack so far and looks equally as dangerous in both of them. And Flynn Clark, it doesn't bode well for Roberts, who was playing as our attacking midfielder last year. But Flynn Clark has settled into this team and looks like an absolute superstar at this level. And I'm very excited by it. Right, we are going to bring on Sturridge to partner Okoronkwo. Uh, Saul not playing great. Maybe maybe we need another striker to complement Okoronkwo. We are going to take off Griffiths and have a look at Levy, which I talked about doing in the previous match. So Cissé can drop back into the defensive midfield position. And then for my final trick, I think we just take off one of these guys who's on a yellow card, Max McKnight, and come on to play right back. He's a player we've threw a long contract at in the summer. We don't want to just replace him with all these new boys we want to give him the, the opportunity to fight for his spot and certainly in this diamond having him flying up and down the right wing is uh is something of an advantage as well so don't don't want to uh don't want to write him off just yet okoronkwo grabs the ball again slots it through to Sturridge I think Sturridge is offside there he is but he uh okoronkwo just involved again I like saying his name and I like watching him play it's the complete package when it comes to YouTube content creation. Marshall playing it forward to McKnight. A weird choice. Bearing in mind, Marshall could have had a shot from there. He's got such a big kick on him. Instead, rolls it out to McKnight, who wasn't ready for it. Didn't know what to do with it. And it's directly led to us conceding a goal. This is just poor decision-making from Marshall. I don't know what he's thinking. McKnight's there. He's back to goal. Not expecting the ball. Doesn't have time to react or do anything with it. McKnight, it looks like that's his fault. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, boys and girls. It's not. That was Marshall's fault. Levy with the set piece, which is one of his specialties. Um, so fingers crossed we are going to see some juicy set pieces from him this year. But it's actually South End who are on the break for a counter-attack here. Luckily, we've forced them wide. Um, although they are still going. Can we get the ball? No? <sighs> Marshall looked beaten again. I tell you what, this league isn't going to be quite as easy as I thought it was going to be at half time of this match. South End are very much coming back into it in this second half. And if anything, looked like the most likely to grab a winner at the moment. And I think we're quite lucky to have held on to that one. This squad, this team, I don't think it's finished. But you know what? That's been a very promising start. I don't think we're going to be in a relegation battle. Playoffs, maybe? Really don't want to have to do the playoffs. Right, we will obviously be back tomorrow. And based on the little tiff I had with their fans on Twitter last week, this is why you should follow me on Twitter, because you see all these kind of shenanigans. There's absolutely no way I would not show you Oldham tomorrow. So it's going to be Peter of Sports versus Oldham, and then either Gateshead or the triple threat with Dagenham and Redbridge will be the other match in tomorrow's episode. But for now, if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.